Hey everyone, Couch Investor here back to another video for you today. I hope you're all having a great weekend right now. For those in America, I'm sure you're all getting ready for the Super Bowl on Sunday. So let me grab your attention for a couple of minutes and try and summarize what happened with Tesla during this week. Of course, the talk of the week was Elon Musk tweeting Master Plan Part 3. The path to a fully sustainable energy future for Earth will be presented on March 1st. The future is bright. Of course, you've all seen this picture by now. It's also in the thumbnail. I know there's a lot of conspiracy theories with regards to the brightness on each and every letter. What might that mean, etc. Of course, if you zoom in, you can see the castings here in the background. Most likely single casting for a Model Y. A lot of people are talking maybe this is for a Model 2. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait. But... With regards to what might be announced on March 1st, to be honest, I don't think they'll announce many products. I think they'll mostly talk about their own roadmap, maybe a bit more focus on the energy side of the business. And I think investors and analysts would enjoy that. Of course, would enjoy if they suddenly announce a Model 2. But to be honest, I don't think this is something you'll announce in an event like that. And certainly not right now, where we're still dealing with a tricky macroeconomic environment where, well, there's still Model Y, there's still maybe a Model 3 refresh. Of course, there is Project Highland. Let's see if we get some more information with regards to that. But it will, in my opinion, be more about the energy side of the business. And secondly, maybe on the Gentry platform, but more on the manufacturing side of things. Of course, Elon Musk has said, well, we would like to get to a point where manufacturing is a bit like a toy company or a beverage company where you get the manufacturing super fast, super efficient. To be honest, I don't really know why companies like Toyota, Volkswagen have never thought about something like that. Of course, now in hindsight, you might say, well, we know why, because, well, look at the way they're managing the situation right now. But again, when you're so long in the business, especially Ford, when you're so long in the business and when you were one of the big, let's say, innovators in the field, what did you never think about, well, innovating in this way and becoming more efficient? I just don't get this. But hey, I guess we'll have to wait another couple of weeks. Now, of course, the stock reacted positively when this was announced. On Friday, the overall stock market was a bit weak. Anticipation for the CPI report next week. A little bit of a reality check. We're not out of the wood yet. Let's see if that report is positive or negative. Now, before I continue even further, if you enjoy this type of video, do leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I would really, really appreciate it if you check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get it up in best stocks to buy now, or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Now, talking about something else that is very interesting and, well, exciting for this year, and that's obviously the Cybertruck. I do feel that we're getting more and more pictures of Cybertrucks in the wild recently. Now, of course, I'm sure you've heard, and I'm sure if you zoom in, you can actually see that the picture, I wouldn't say it's manipulated, but it's taken in a certain angle where in this frame right here, the Cybertruck doesn't look as big as in another video uh, is another picture. In this one, it actually looks a bit more, I would say compact, but less big than usual. You can see the mirrors here on the side. You can see the wipers here as well. The wheels, quite nice. I mean, it's interesting that we're now getting more and more pictures of Cybertrucks out there as we're nearing closer to production, not mass production, but production. And I don't know why I've heard or I've seen someone talk about, well, 300,000 Cybertrucks in 2024. I mean, I'll be happy if I first see a thousand Cybertrucks on the road. Let's start with that. Then I'd like to grab your attention when it comes to California, the new car dealers association releases fourth quarter 2022 auto outlook. Now, if you scroll down here and then we're going to have a look at a graph in just a second, but you can see here Toyota remained at the top of California's market share in 2022 at 17.3% followed by Tesla at 11.2%, Ford 84 Hyundai 79 and Chevrolet at 6.8%. Interestingly, California's appetite for Tesla vehicles is much larger than the nationwide average, which accounts for only 3.5% of the brand market share. Remember, California, a very blue state, so yes, Elon Musk is hurting the brand. Yup. Anyways, continuing here. 
The Tesla Model Y was the top selling light truck in 2022 with 87,257 registration, 7.6% of the market share. The top selling passenger car model in the state is the Tesla Model 3 with 78,934 registrations. Now, if we go and look at a graph, we can clearly see here hybrid electric vehicle market share in 2022 is 31.1%. That's up from 23.4% in 2021. Now, if you look at electric, that has been going up very, very fast. If you look at hybrid, excluding plugins, has grown, but not that much. And if you look at plugin hybrids, well, that has actually decreased year over year. Now with the numbers I showed you before, here's a maybe better visual representation of the top selling passenger cars and the top selling light trucks. Well, Tesla again, dominating. Now moving on to China. So we've got here some numbers by Moneyball. So Tesla made in China, January retail. So Model Y, 14,184. Model 3, 12,659. Now it also gave us the wholesale number for January. So for Model Y, that was 40,903. And for the Model 3, 25,148. And since demand is still very high for Tesla, believe it or not, the narrative has suddenly changed. Well, since the demand is so high, Model Y price has increased. For the Model Y long range, the price has increased $1,500. For the performance, it has increased $1,000. Now for the Model 3, rear wheel drive, there is actually a price cut of $500. And it's also now available from $349 a month for leasing. Now, on Sunday, we'll have the Super Bowl. Last year's Super Bowl, of course, there are some General Motors, advertising commercials, maybe some other vehicles there as well. We'll see what happens with demand for Tesla. Last year, Google Trends showed us a huge spike for Tesla, even though they don't advertise. Let's see if this year it's the same story. And I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla suddenly raises prices again, because as you can see, this is the new Model 3 NY inventory levels has come down quite nicely. Now, obviously you, you might ask yourself, oh, what's that spike here? Well, actually that spike actually happened because Model Y inventory was pretty close to zero. So they added around 200 vehicles there in inventory. And that's why you see this spike here, because as you can see, it was 275 and now we're at 538. And if I'll show you the Model Y chart, you can see that there was an increase from 16 to 227. So basically the Model Y has made the difference here because well, if inventory is close to zero, <laughs> let's bring it back up to around 227, which again is very, very low. And then the last thing I wanna show you before we go and look at the graph, and that is something with regards to the Tesla's virtual power plant. So the energy side of the business, We've seen this on Reddit. Well, for those of you that are on Reddit, so someone posted this. $574.77 in compensation from the virtual power plant events last year. 10 events over 26 hours, 297 kilowatt hours sent to the grid. So basically by supporting the grid with your power wall in 2022, you earned a $574.77, your payment will be mailed to you at your address, blah, blah, blah. But this just shows you the benefits. And I think this is going to be huge. And now lastly, the chart. We're again here on a weekly chart. Of course, we're up quite nicely since the lows. If you wanna know exactly since the lows at the start of the year, let's start right here until today, we are up 74%. Of course, at a point we were up close to 90%, but if you've watched my last video, I believe it was the last week's edition. And if not last week's edition, it was my reaction to Chicken's video. I did say that, well, while we were far away from that 200 day moving average, so the blue line right here, still RSI is quite okay on a weekly chart. MACD has turned positive or still positive right now. I did say that we should be watching out for the 200 day moving average. We tried, we failed, obviously we backtracked here. The overall market has changed sentiment a little bit now on Friday. Next week we have CPI report. So again, the sentiment might change negative if the report is bad, which means suddenly if let's say inflation has accelerated again, or if the downtrend continues, then the market will be a bit more happy. Now, 
on the daily chart, here you can clearly see what happens, right? We try to go at that 200 day moving average, got rejected, two red candles. We were also overbought. So the logical answer here to what is happening with the stock in the short term, of course, when you look at the MACD was extremely bullish. Now I'm not going to say we're going to go down, 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 but yes, of course, if you're looking for gaps, you can find one right here at around $150, $160. Are we going to fall this low? I don't know. If we are, fine, <laughs> I'll have to add more shares. If not, then not. And so to conclude, that's what's been happening with Tesla this week. Of course, there's more excitement ahead of us than behind us. I think March 1st will answer a lot of questions and maybe might raise some questions as well. But currently, of course, the stock during 2023 has gone up extremely fast. I've said this before, we were due to a little pullback. If that pullback will be another 10, 20%, I don't know. I don't really care. I'm in it for the long term. Of course, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. Are you trading Tesla right now? Are you holding? Do you have some extra news you want to share? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.